Welcome again Scorpio, it's November 2015, glad to have you company again. Uh, last month and this month in the introductions you may have noticed I've been talking about self-empowerment and how you can avail yourself of that, uh, I guess, coveted position. Very few people feel empowered. Uh, right now you'll feel a lot more empowered by the opportunity to meet new people, new friends, having Jupiter, Venus and Mars in your 11th house of friendships. This is a very important um, element. Not that, as I've said in those introductions, that you need to rely on things external to yourself, but being surrounded by people who can, <coughs> I guess, um, confirm and yeah, solidify your internal dialogue, your internal understanding, uh, helps you to feel as if what you've used internally to empower yourself is correct. So it's more or less an acknowledgement of, of, of this process. And you know, right now you'll be feeling a lot better. Sun moving through your sun sign of Scorpio up until the 23rd. You have a new moon also taking place in your sun sign. So here's hoping and praying that <coughs> the transits will indeed bring with them for you a marked shift from the uh, previous year or two, which has been, for a lot of you, on, on a bit of a downhill um, motion. Now we see the new moon releases a lot of new energy. It commences its transit this month in your ninth house. So you're relying on higher mind, <coughs> intuitive responses to those problems of life that maybe you've found you haven't been able to deal with adequately uh, using the typical sorts of uh, techniques, mental or otherwise. So intuition is a, a, a powerful tool and as is uh, spiritual energy, which you know, obviously the skeptics will say, well, what is that? I guess it's the force of willpower and there's enough evidence to show that even in uh, the placebo effect, how you think and feel about a situation does have an impact on it, including your health. Now let's talk about these friendships. We've got uh, Venus and Mars moving out of that area um, on the 9th and the 13th respectively, moving to the 12th house. So there could be some journeys uh, occurring for you, but these are journeys that might involve an extended stay. Or if you're not actually journeying, this could be an extended um, withdrawal from the normal circumstances and people that you hang out with. The 12th house is a house of um, lesser activity, introspection, self-analysis, that type of thing, charitable work. And uh, it could be a questioning period for you while those planets are in that particular station. Mercury, of course, moving out on the second into your sun sign. A lot of activity around your sun sign this month, which is why you'll feel a lot better about yourself. These planetary energies augment your true nature on uh, those different uh, dimensions. You know, soul force, Mercury uh, hitting your mental level. Um, and then throughout that process as well, just in the beginning of the second week, Moon moving into the uh, sign of Scorpio will uh, enhance your uh, intuitive and spiritual activities, being the ninth ruler of your horoscope. Um, Venus and Mars in the 12th house uh, is quite interesting too. This uh, can give a desire to uh, meet exotic people. Uh, these two planets are notorious for their sexual innuendo. <clears throat> the 12th house too is the house of bed pleasures. So there could be some fun times in store for you sexually, Scorpio, which uh, being the sexual sign of the zodiac, I'm sure you're very happy to hear about. <laughs> Um, you know, money's still not great because you've got that uh, slow-moving Saturn transit that just commands there. And of course, a lot of you will be now relying on some other alternatives to your f financial satisfaction. Or if indeed you're relying on financial satisfaction at all. Again, empowering yourself is not about what you have. It's about who you are and about the vision you have for yourself and how you feel internally about what's going on in life. So finding a greater balance there is uh, no doubt an important thing for you. Venus, the ruler of your seventh house of marriage and relationships in the sextile aspect to Saturn on the 14th leading up to that date, that uh, 
that solidifies your relationships. It can make them rather cool and not so exciting, but you've got that Mars there. So I've got a feeling and we see later in the month uh, around the 24th, Mars will um, make its sextile aspect to Saturn. So it's, you're blowing hot and cold on that. There may be opportunities for sexual satisfaction. Uh, at the same time, you may need to have your own space and cut your partner out of the picture for a while. And that's not a bad idea. Sometimes you need your own space, rediscover yourself and then come back fresh and anew into the relationship together. What else do we have here? A very powerful aspect of Venus squaring your uh, ruling planet Pluto on the uh, 21st. That's pretty tough, pretty obsessive. That can bring a direct challenge uh, and maybe an abuse of power or what you consider an abuse of power um, thereabouts on the 21st. We mentioned that that's followed up by the full moon on the 26th uh, in uh, Gemini, which is your eighth house. Uh, some of your problems there may have to do with the way your partner is managing money. If you're in a situation where you're the breadwinner the other party is the bread spender, the bread loser, if I could put it that way, then conflicts can arise there for sure, uh, because those aspects are not at all, uh, or not at all conducive to peace of mind or harmony within uh, relationships. The Mercury aspects on the 25th and the 26th, with Saturn on the 26th also. Uh, difficult aspects to Saturn and Neptune indicate the problems you may have with communications at that time. Uh, Mercury will be in Sagittarius. Uh, this is the finance sector, as I mentioned earlier. So th the second half of the month seems to be bogged down a little bit with financial issues and financial worries. But I am hoping that that's going to pass quickly because we do see um, Mercury uh, you know, won't stay there forever. It'll then move into your third house. Uh, we'll get on to that next month. But uh, don't, uh, don't give up hope yet. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Saturn is in the right angle to Neptune. That's challenging your desires. It's challenging your creativity. You probably don't have enough time to do the creative uh, pursuits that you enjoy. Neptune is in your fifth house. If you've been held up there, we see that on the 19th, there's a forward movement. Uh, but you are still challenged there around the 26th from that hard aspect from Saturn, which is relating to your, uh, your family affairs and also just your communication. But after that, I think you're going to find uh, your feet again and be able to re re resuscitate some of those uh, really deep creative feelings that you so long for at the moment. Sun is also in the right angle to Neptune. So how you're presenting yourself as a character uh, as opposed to what you identify as the real you could be a problem. Again, it's coming back to the theme, self-empowerment. What do you need to do to break free of this and to assert yourself for who you are, then in turn do doing what you do? They're the questions for you this month. I think if you can even uh, turn that energy of awareness back in on yourself, you'll come up with some solutions, some answers, especially with that Mercury uh, due to move into your third house of the mind, that'll be conjoining Pluto. I'm going to talk about that next month. Uh, there's some light at the end of the tunnel for you. Look forward to your company next month here again in December. But uh, don't forget, for a more elaborate uh, detail on uh, what's happening in November, uh, my site, astrology.com.au. Meanwhile, you can subscribe here. Uh, there's a button here somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Somewhere along the bottom. And uh, I hope it's a good one for you. Till next time. Bye-bye now.